um hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and i know it's been a long long time since i uploaded a video i think it's almost been like a year or so since i last uploaded a video and so yeah i'm really sorry about that i've just been really busy with a lot of work and just i had not I mean i never had the proper equipment to do all this so from now on i i plan to do a little more uh, frequent i mean i plan to upload more frequently and plan to do a lot more videos and be consistent on my channel so i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to do but uh it's obviously going to be pro be programming related and i also don't want to cover a lot of basic stuff like basic programming or python and all that because they're already like like lots of channels are already do that and they do a, like a brilliant job right so i really want to do something that's like more intermediate and some I mean uh, something that's more geared towards an intermediate programmer someone who already knows the basics but wants to build something using that knowledge so yeah in i mean if you're interested in that you can leave a comment below as to what you would like to see or what you would like to learn about and that being said um yeah so yeah that being said let's just jump jump right into the tutorial so what we have here is a breadth first search maze solver and also this um this tutorial is going to be for someone who already knows the basics of python like i'm not i'm, I'm not going to be explaining what a for loop is or what an if condition is or what is an array and all that so that's a pre prerequisite to this tutorial so if you're not familiar with all those things just brush up on that or just go learn and by watching another video about arrays in python and all that and then come back to this video so yeah this is more so I mean, this is more geared towards someone who has an who is an intermediate programmer and already has some experience in programming. So that being said, let me just show you what uh, we'll be building today. So let's run, let's quickly run this Python script. So here you can see like you have like an image, and this image was taken from Google Google Images, and you can just set the starting point. You can see the red dot. That's the starting point. And if I set another point, which is the ending point, the breadth first search will actually flood the entire maze and try to find like the shortest path from the bunny to the maze or whatever from the starting point to the ending point, right? So that's what we'll be doing today, and it's a really cool way to visualize breadth first search. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So yeah, and yeah, one more thing is. Uh, the editor that I'm using here is Visual Studio Code and it's an open source uh, editor and I'd highly recommend that people use it. So yeah, that being said, let me, let's just go and create a folder for our project, Maze Solver. All right. So let me just uh, copy some files into that Maze Solver. Some, you can, I mean, you can use any image that you want. Okay, let me just go back here and copy it. Uh, I open CV images. So here I have like a set of images, the maze images basically. You can I mean no. I'll probably link this in the description, but you can use any maze that you want. So yeah. So let's just go ahead and paste this here. Alright. So let's just open that folder in Visual Studio Code. Alright. So now we have three uh I mean we have like a five images here. Like, as you can see, it's actually a color image, but we are going to be converting it into a black and white image and all that. So just go ahead and create the Python file. Uh, maze, let's call it solver.py. All right. So that being said, uh, this project has a few dependencies. Uh, we'll be using OpenCV to uh, load the images uh, from, yeah, from the, from windows or whatever so we'll be using OpenCV to load the images and access every single pixel inside uh, the image so if you want to install OpenCV I think the command is uh, pip install open OpenCV dash Python alright so let's go ahead and copy this if you have if you have Python installed uh, in your computer you'll have you probably have pip installed too so just make sure that you're using Python 3.6 or 3.5 or whatever. I think anything 
um, any version should work but yeah I'm using Python 3.6 so yeah so just go ahead and paste this in your uh, command prompt or terminal or whatever if you're using Visual Studio code you can press control and uh, back tick or control and tilde to open up the terminal and you can just paste it here I won't be pasting it because I already have OpenCV installed so yeah and also one more thing is we'll be doing a little bit of multi-threading but nothing too complicated so don't worry about that so let's go ahead and start typing our code so first thing you have to import is import uh, cv2 one sec let's just let me just make this font size a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it i think i just close this okay so import open cv i think it's too big okay this should be good enough import cv2 sorry import cv2 that will actually import your open cv library and then we'll have to import sorry import numpy as as np we won't be doing i don't think we need numpy but ah this is the first thing okay import threading Uh, this threading library is already in installed and comes with Python, so you don't have to worry about that. Import color sys. So yeah, I'll come back to what this is. I think we'll be using this to convert colors from um, RGB to HSV and all that. So if you don't know what that is, fine. I'll come back to that later. All right. So first, what we have to do is if we are going to convert every single pixel and treat it as a point so traditionally BFS is usually done on a graph or whatever but here we'll be treating every single pixel as a node in a graph alright so what we have to do we just have to build like a basic um, class for a point alright so point object okay and then we have to write the constructor for it def constructor is basically something that creates the object self comma x is equal to zero i is equal to zero okay there's no dot here and you just have to initialize the self dot x to x and self dot y to y all right so this just creates a simple object that has uh, x and y as their uh, member variables and also we'll have to to make things simpler and uh, to make things more easier we'll be overloading the add operator so that will be def underscore underscore sorry def underscore underscore add underscore underscore so if you know what's, what operator load it, overloading is, yeah, you, sh you mean, you know that this will actually overload the plus operator. Self or the other. Return. You're bas just basically telling Python what it has to do when it sees two point objects and a plus in between, right? So what you want to do is you want to create a new point object with the, with, by adding a, uh, the x of both the x and y's of the both the, both the points so this will be cell dot x plus other dot x all right and then same thing self dot y comma other dot y all right so what this does is this basically uh, creates a point object calls the constructor passes this as the x and sorry this is a plus passes this as the y and then this creates a new object and returns that all right so and one more thing is if you want to check if two points are equal we have to like overload the equal to equal to operator or known as equals operator eq underscore underscore and so all you have to do is uh, pass the self self other and then check if the x is equal to the other x and y is equal to the other y uh, so return self dot x is equal to other dot x and self dot y equal I mean equal to equal to sorry this is double equals single equals is just assigning an operator so other dot y all right 
So what this will do is it will check if the x of both the points are same and the y of the both the points are same. O T H E R. Sorry, I'm making a lot of typos today. Um, yeah. So let's check if both the x's are equal and the y's are equal. And then it'll, if the if they both are equal, that means they both are the same point. Um, they point to the same point. So yeah, that's it for our given class. You can go ahead and minimize this or just leave it open. Your choice. So this will be our point class and uh, we'll be using this to create points and create point objects and use them in the breadth first, so breadth first search solver. Okay, so next what we have to do is we need two points. We need the starting point that is where the maze starts from or where you want the breadth first search to start searching from and just create an empty uh, point object and then also end all right and also we need to have another thing called p is equal to zero uh, basically this shows how many uh, uh, how many points have been registered but for now i'll just leave it at that and i'll come back to this later uh, later okay so now we have two points start and end okay and also we need an array of points that will we'll be using for the breadth first search point zero comma minus one okay just copy paste this like four times okay so this will be zero one sv one zero minus one zero the order doesn't really matter, but yeah, as you know, like uh, breadth first search needs to know in which all directions that it has to start searching in. So this will actually tell you that minus one is actually upwards. I know it's usually downwards if people are familiar to, if people who are coming from math background, they mean who used to like geometry and all that, or what graphs or whatever, you know that minus one is down. But here in computer science, your zero zero starts from the top left coordinate. So minus one is actually going upwards and y increases as it goes down. All right. So this is actually up. This is actually down. This is actually right. And this is actually left. Yes, I got that correct. All right. So that being said, uh, we'll be using this in breadth first search to store, uh, to decide what directions to pass to the algorithm, to pass to the algorithm. All right. And yeah. So these are our global variables for now. And so what we can do now is we can use OpenCV to load the image. IMG is equal to CV2 dot IM read. Okay, what IM read does is basically it takes a string and the string is actually a path that points to uh, an image. So here we'll be using, I think maze underscore three dot PNG but uh, for you that will be whatever uh, file name that you have here all right and then we just tell it that we want to read it as a grayscale image all right cv2 dot uh, i am read underscore gray sorry sorry i am read grayscale all right so yeah this will actually tell you that we have to open this image as a grayscale okay next what we have to do is we have to threshold this image thresholding is basically converting a grayscale image that has black whites and grays into just a black and white image all right so we just go into photoshop let's take a print screen of this go into photoshop and paste it and if i apply like a threshold uh, filter you can see that everything is just black and white there are no grays right and you can choose what color what threshold value you want to pass uh, want to pass to this and depending upon that it will tell you which areas of your um, image is going to be white or black okay so coming back so the threshold operation in OpenCV is cv2 dot i am thresh i think it's threshold yeah this dot dot threshold okay so what this does is it takes an image object okay and then it takes the threshold value and the color of the threshold that you want 
okay and then the type of the threshold that you want okay so this is actually just thresh underscore binary so binary is basically just two colors I think there are other options like thresh underscore binary underscore inverse and uh, I think I think there's one for color also I'm not sure but yeah we'll be using a binary threshold that's basically just two colors black and white okay so it returns some nonsense object that we, do, we don't care about but yeah the image is what we are just overwriting again so we'll just quickly show you what this looks like okay so let me just quickly show you what the first image looks like uh, to view an image all you have to do is um, I think it's cv2 dot I am show I am show all right and you have to pass the title of the window that's just be image it can be anything and you have to pass the image object okay and then so what you have to do is you have to tell open cv that you want to wait before you close that okay so cv2 dot wait key so wait key zero what it does is basically waits for a key input indefinitely okay so it waits until you press a key before it continues any forward any more yeah any forward okay and then you copy this and you paste it here so that we can see both uh, the images uh, sorry you have to copy this to here all right so basically what it does it loads an image displays it and then thresholds an image and displays it again okay so uh, let me make that as image 2 make, make, let me make this as image 1 so I quickly run this uh, numpy okay sorry sorry this is numpy n-u-m-p-y sorry about that typo uh, run python file so as you can see like you have a little bit of grays here in this image it's not just black and white as you can see here there's like a subtle gray here so I press a key you can see that this image has been completely converted into like a black and white image whereas this image image 1 has a little bit of grays in it okay so that's it and uh, so that's how you load an image and do a threshold filter so now what we want to do is let's just delete all of this okay so now what we want to do is we want to convert the image back into a color image okay so what we do we say cv2 dot convert color cvt yeah cvt color stands for convert color so what it does it takes an image object and it also takes the color that you want to convert to so that will be color underscore uh, underscore gray so we want to convert it from gray to uh, BGR okay so OpenCV has this weird thing where it does everything in BGR that is blue green red whereas the usually everything is done in red green blue or RGB so yeah so that's one nuisance that you will have to deal with for now there's no way around it I mean I think there is but uh, yeah I mean yeah usually everyone just does it using BGR so IMG and yeah so what you want to do is get the uh, dimensions of the image so IMG shape colon 2 all right so what it does is IMG shape is an array that holds the uh, X Y and Z uh, dimensions of the given image so we don't care about the Z dimension so we just use the first two ones that's X and Y okay so now what we have to do is print select select uh, start and end points okay P O I N T S yes okay so what this will do is uh, we'll have to write a mouse callback function or a mouse event handler function that will handle all mouse events so basically you need to tell OpenCV what happens when you click on a window in OpenCV or when you move around or whatever so we'll be using a click to register a point okay so for that we will have to go ahead and write um, a mouse callback function okay it's pretty simple so yeah let's just go so let's just put this above let's just put this below direction our global variables so just do diff mouse underscore event this can be anything this is a function name event 
underscore event comma so it takes a point x and a point y and some flags and comma param okay so we don't really care about these two for now all we care about is this and this so the first thing is to check if uh, we have uh, we have done a left click right so if you want to check if it's a left click or not so you say if event dot I think it's no sorry event is equal to equal to cv2 dot uh, event underscore left button down or you can use up also that's fine okay so what this does is it checks if this given event is a left uh, mouse button up event so basically when you uh, press and release your left mouse button this event get occurs okay so what we can do is we have to register uh, the start and end points so what we can do is if p equal to equal to zero that is if no point has been registered so we register the start point okay so cv2 dot um oh yeah sorry before that start is equal to point p o i n t point of um p x comma p y so this basically creates a point object and with the with the parameters p x and p y that's basically the location at which the mouse was clicked and it returns that in returns that and stores it in the start variable okay so next thing is we just want to console log this so that we can see what um, the start variable is so we can just say start is equal to star dot x comma star dot y okay so we can see what the start and end uh, values are I mean start and uh, start x and start y values are okay and then we do p plus equal to 1 which basically mean we are incrementing p by 1 to indicate that the first point has been registered right so here I said I'll come back to this later right so this is where we are going to like mention this so initially there are no points registered so if p is equal to 1 that means the start point has been registered if p is equal to 2 that means our end point also has been registered okay so right now is just p is equal to 1 one more thing before we move on what we have to do is to make it uh, to view the point that has been drawn onto the I mean to, to mean to view the point that we have selected let's just draw like a small rectangle on the image to indicate that we have drawn um, we have selected a point and we can visually see it on the image right so all we have to do is we just have to do cv2 dot rectangle okay and the rectangle takes in uh, four parameters the top left corner the bottom right corner the color and I think the thickness or the stroke I'm not too sure about the last one though let me just see if I can see that rectangle okay so yeah yeah correct all right so it takes image yeah it takes it takes five parameters sorry so it takes an image the left uh, the top left point the bottom left point the color and the thickness okay so all we have to do is rectangle pass an image so before that we don't really know what image is so we just have to tell this function that we have we have the image as a global variable that will be global img and also start and and p so this is, I mean, you're just telling uh, the function that these are all the global variables and so yeah pass this point so the top left point right so let's just declare another variable that will tell us what the dimension of the rectangle will be so for now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, choose uh, two or I'm just going to tell you I mean this will actually tell you what the half dimensions of the rectangle I mean or square will be so the half dimensions of the or RW stands for rectangle width so you can make it the RHW rectangle half width but we just keep it RW okay just a second my cough mic on sorry about that so 
this RW will actually tell you what the rectangle half width will be and we can go ahead and use that so the top left point will be px minus rw comma py minus rw okay and the bottom right point will be uh, px no, no sorry px in capital okay and py in capital and px will be plus rw and this will be plus py plus rw okay so this is the top uh, left corner this is the bottom right corner all right so next what we have to do is we have to pass in the color in bgr format okay so bgr format basically stands for uh, blue green red so you want it to be red that will be 0 0 to 55 okay and then minus one for the thickness and so yeah so we're creating a red uh, rectangle or a red square to on the image so that we can actually visualize what the point that we have actually created so next thing what we have to go ahead and do is um, when p is equal to 1 right you want to store the end point so we say end is equal to this point and let's just change the color so that we know what color it is so let's get 255 and just make it a little more lighter okay I think let's make it 200 and just remove this oh, that's fine okay any color that's fine so it's going to make it like a green color and it's going to say end is equal to point to px comma py and we say end is equal to copy this n dot x and n dot y okay and this when increment p so when p is equal to 2 that means both the points have been set okay so before we go ahead and display our image let's just create a simple thread that will actually display the image and not um, wait for the main thread so basically what we have is right now we have everything is uh, synchro synchronous right so if you want everything if you want the image display to be asynchronously updated we have to we have to like uh, draw that in a separate image so all we have to do is uh, we have to call another make another function called def disp d i s p def disp and it takes a um, global g l o b n global variable image okay and what it does is it just shows displays the image over and over again i am show pass the image and pass img object uh, and also what we have to do here is we have let's just attach the mouse callback function uh, cv2 dot attach a a t t a c h wait what is that cv2 dot oh sorry set mouse callback set mouse callback function and then we pass uh, the image title the title I mean the window title that we want to uh, attach this to image and the function that we want to pass it to that will be mouse underscore event all right so this is the first time when the display will be set we are going to be, be calling this and what you have to do is in a while loop while uh, one or while true true all we have to do is we have to just display the image again and again right and we also have to pass cv2 dot wait key one okay so what this loop does is it just keeps looping forever and just shows this image it shows this image object in this window title okay and then cv2 dot wait key will actually wait for one millisecond before it actually goes back again and then starts displaying again right so if you if i give you uh, cv2 I mean cv2 dot wait key zero this will actually wait forever for a key to be pressed and we don't want that so we want it to just wait for one millisecond and then update it again okay so what we have to do to run this in a separate thread is all we have to do is it's very simple threading in python is like super simple right so t is equal to threading dot thread okay so this basically creates a new thread and the target is the display function okay so this basically tells what function you want to call in another thread 
I mean in another thread right so args this args is basically the arguments that we want to pass to the display function and you can see that it's not taking any arguments so this will actually be blank so t dot t dot daemon dot sorry d a e m o n d a e m o n oh my god why am i making so many typos true so and then all you have to do is t dot start t dot start okay so what this does is it takes this display function this display function puts it here in another thread and then just starts it in the background daemon is something this that just runs in the background okay so while we are displaying this image we have to wait for both the points to be set before we can do our maze search right so while p is less than 2 we just do pass pass is basically do nothing right so we're just waiting for p to be equal to 2 so that we know that when p is equal to 2 the start and the end point will be set okay so until it's less than 2 we just do nothing and we wait for it okay so i can actually quickly run this and show you what it does so let me i think this should work so let's run this name t is not defined um oh sorry this is t equal to t is equal to threading let's run that again all right so now if i actually click okay that didn't work oh i think i know what it is sorry sorry so here what's happening is um so if p is equal to zero and then we're incrementing p and then we're checking it again right so this is actually supposed to be an else if or else this is going to execute after this if it's if it was an if but now that is an else if it is just, this entire condition is just checked like at one block as one block right so just go ahead and just let's, let's just add like a wait key cv2 dot wait key of zero so that it doesn't disappear immediately so let's just run that again if oh sorry sorry um yeah sorry in python it's actually not else if it's elif my bad okay so now if we just click let me just click here okay so now you can see like a small red dot there and if i click again you will see like a small green dot all right and that green dot is actually defined that means the size of the green dot is defined by this so if we make that as 20 you will see like a really really huge um this thing wait oh i just have to stop this okay run this again so if i click it now you can see like the the square or the what are the start point has become much much bigger and we don't want that so we just keep it at keep it at keep it at uh 20 okay so that being said all we have left to do is now is write the breadth first search function right so now that we have a start and end point uh, at this point uh, we have to do do bfs okay so now uh, at this point when your code reaches this point or line number 69 in my case uh, both the points will actually have been registered and all we have to do is start do the breadth first search and fill in the maze okay so for that we have to go ahead and create a new function called bfs df bfs bfs sorry um so what this bfs does it takes two points start and end point and basically it tries to like draw over the maze um and um uh, show like visualize breadth first search in like real time right so let's just see so as i said i won't be going over breadth first search in too much detail but it's going to like tell you what uh what what will happen at what stages so if you don't know what breadth first search is i highly recommend that you actually go ahead and uh do a look up on what or learn breadth first search from some course or something okay so it takes it needs the global variables image height and width okay so i mean so let's just declare under constant some random constant i'll come back to what this will be later later okay 
so for breadth versus we need a Q so we need a Q okay and I also need to know if the path was found so we have a boolean called found is equal to false false F capital okay we need a Q and we need a visited array okay visited array will be a two-dimensional array so this will be uh, just a bunch of um, numbers in indi zero indicating that it has not been visited anything other than zero means it has been visited okay so we do zero for j in range w and since this is a two-dimensional array we have to do that w uh, the this whatever row uh, h times basically for every uh, for every what do you call for every pixel in the vertical axis we just have to keep keep creating this uh, row okay so this for i in range h so basically this creates a two dimensional array of size w cross h and we also need another two dimensional array parent parent so parent will actually basically hold the parent of the given um, cell so just copy paste this sorry we just copy paste this entire thing and instead of zero what we want is we want a point p o i n t so basically this will tell you uh, the parent at x comma y I mean it'll tell you uh, who is the parent for a given cell at x comma y so if you say parent of uh, if you say parent of x comma y will actually tell you what who is mean who is the parent who the parent is so maybe some x prime comma y prime some some other point right so yeah that's what the parent is there for and one more thing is okay yeah so these are the variables that you will need and you have to push the starting point into the array so q dot append start okay no semicolon and then we also say visited of start dot y and start dot x as one okay one basically means visited zero means not visit not visited so while while sorry while len of q is greater than zero all we have to do is we have to like pop the first thing in the queue p is equal to q dot pop of zero and for d in uh, dir four right so yeah now you're going to use these directions in the breadth first search to um, to visit the neighbors right so if you have a given cell its neighbors will the neighbors will be these four points left top down and right okay so and then we say uh, the cell the neighbor cell or whatever is the parent cell plus the given direction okay so this will basically this is why we needed the plus over I mean plus operator to be overloaded so that we can simply add the direction to the parent and get the neighboring cell okay so first we have to check if this cell is in bounds so if cell dot y or cell dot x is greater than or equal to zero and cell dot x is less than the width and so i forgot an and here and and cell dot y is greater than or equal to zero and cell dot uh, y is less than h okay so not just this we need to do a few more things and that will be we have to check if the given cell is or has already been visited one second my ipad just closed um okay so we also have to check if the cell has been visited and so if visited of cell dot y and sorry cell dot x is equal to equal to zero and we also have to check if the given cell is um, white in color right 
so as we saw like all our white part is going to be the part that we're going to be able to explore the black is going to be our walls or the boundaries of the maze okay so also we have to check if uh, and image img of cell dot y cell dot x equal to equal to oh we have to we also have to check the blue color and you have to check if it is not equal to black or we can just say equal to zero equal, mean not equal to zero or equal to equal to 255 I think yeah, not equal to zero is better because yeah we'll be using colors to fill the white part so yeah so if we say not equal to zero okay we also this is just for the blue region right so the zero as you remember it's BGR not RGB so zero is for the blue and we just have to do this three more times and and you should make it one for green and two for red so this basically says if um, the blue of this given cell is not equal to zero and the blue of I mean the green of the cell is not equal to zero and the red of the cell is not equal to zero then that means this is not a wall and it can actually be explored okay it's actually a white I mean yeah it's not a wall and it can actually be explored so that being said let's just let me just put this in another line or oh, that's fine I guess okay yeah let's just put this in another line okay this looks messy let's just put this here put this here and yeah that's good so what we have to do now is um, we have to check uh, we have to first append this to the queue because we have to like keep operating the queue queue dot app append then we have to append um, cell right and then we also have to tell that the visited array that this cell has been now visited cell dot y and cell dot x is equal to one so instead of doing one let's just do something different so what we can do is we can actually increment this um, from the previous parent value so we do p dot x and p, p of y and x and we increment that by one right so if the parents value is one the new the cell value will be two so the parent value is let's say 100 the cell value will be 101 okay i'll tell you why we're going to do this later later okay so that being said we also have to check sorry we also have to check if this image um this is 255. We have to check if I think uh, this image is white. I don't know why. One second. Okay, yeah. So if this image, if or if this cell is going to be white, we just have to like change the color to uh, some color that will be that some some color to uh, say that this has been visited, right? So I think usually this will always always be visited. So this condition is not necessary. So yeah. Uh, let's just do that directly image of cell dot x sorry cell dot y first cell dot uh, y is equal to so we have to assign a certain color to this right so instead of um, assigning a static color or a single color to all the visited cells what we can do is we can make use of this number here and based on that we can set the hue value of the given color right to set to set the hue value all uh, we have to call this function called color sys dot hsv to rgb right so what this will do is will take a hue hsv uh, color and convert it to convert it to an rgb color okay so the hsv color can be taken from the hue can be taken from this and we just keep the saturation as one comma one okay uh, okay yeah let there be another line that's fine let's put this here for now and also uh, as you know like this function will actually take all values between one and zero right so but this this value this v of cell y and cell x can go up to like thousand or 
whatever 100 depending upon the size of your maze right so what we want to do is we want to divide this by a constant constant okay and as you know like we defined like a constant and this is just trial and error and you can see what dif different constants will give you varying uh, changes in color so for now I think we'll just use three th I mean 2000 so yeah so this constant will actually uh, convert this value uh, where is that yeah sorry it'll actually convert this value into some value between uh, 0 and 1 right so because it's a high number you just have to div divide it by another high number to keep it as a float between 0 and 1 even if it goes up by 1 it's fine it will still work one more thing we have to do is since I, I keep saying that uh, OpenCV uses BGR and not RGB we have to reverse this list okay so we have to do list you have to first R E V R S E D. reverse will basically reverse this uh, reversed and then we just have to kind of cast it to a list again okay fine so that being said um, that is done we also have to set the parent of this cell right so parent of sorry ea parent of cell cell dot y cell dot x is equal to p okay so this basically stairs it means stores the parent of this given cell and last thing we have to check is if this cell is equal to equal to the end point right so if this cell is the ending point then we stop the maze we stop searching we stop bfs and we stop searching in the maze and we say found is equal to true basically stating that our uh, we have found a given path from the start to the end point right so and then we just empty the queue delete queue colon sorry queue colon and then we just have to break out of this for loop out of this given for loop okay so that is actually bfs right and i think uh, this will work and if you're satisfied we just want to see like colors over the maze like being filled up sequentially by a breadth first search this will actually work you can stop here and then you can run this let's just run this and see what we get so i say here and if i say here it is supposed to fill the maze something is wrong hmm oh i think i know why one second we have oh yeah we haven't actually called our our function yet right so here we said do bfs but we never called anything so it's called do bfs pass the start end okay close this annoying pop-up so set the start point set the end point and it should work and it's not working hmm why is that so after i mean i actually paused the video and did a little bit of debugging okay and i found out that uh, it was actually not working for a few reasons so here you can see on this line here right this is actually cell y and cell y that it should be cell y and cell x okay and one more thing is um this thing right this function here uh one sec let me just show that clearly so this function that converts hsp to rgb right it returns all values between uh, 0 and 1 but OpenCV requires values to be between 0 and 255 so all we have to do is we have to convert it into an array and multiply all the values by 255 so we do for i in this array okay and then we do i star 255 okay so this basically multiply all the values from 0 to 1 to 0 to 255 okay that is that is one thing and one other thing is this thing this condition here is actually kind of confusing so uh, I'll actually explain this correctly once and for all as to what it does so this I mean the previous condition here v of whatever v of cell y and cell x basically checks if a cell is visited or not right but that condition is not just sufficient for us to um, execute breadth first search we also have to check if 
the next the, the given cell is actually a wall or in this case it's a black color black pixel okay so if it is a black pixel on then we don't actually do anything we just be, be, because a black here represents a wall a non explorable area okay so if it's black we don't do anything right so uh one thing to notice here is um we want at least one of the channels to not be equal to zero right so we w we want at least blue green or red or one of them to not be equal to zero right because if all of them are equal to zero that means it's a black pixel right so here this condition should be if blue not equal to zero or green not equal to zero or red not equal to zero right at least one of them should not be equal to zero right so you might be wondering why this is the case since all our images are black and white and we can just check one I mean the first channel right Your, you mean if you mean if you assume that you will be wrong right because what we did here is in the mouse event we actually drew like a red color rectangle on top of our maze right and also we drew like a small green rectangle on our maze so now we don't just have white and black we also have these two green and red rectangles to deal with right so if it is red that means it's still not black so it's still explorable right so we just have to check this condition and make sure that at least one of them is not zero right if all three of them is zero that means it's black and we are not going to do it so if you save this and run this this should actually work please work okay one sec clear this run invalid syntax um what did i do here okay sorry this brackets has to be outside here okay run python file okay so now drum roll and there you go you have bfs search in a maze okay but that's not the end of it so what we want to do is we still want to find out the path i mean if you're happy with this then well and good but if you still want to do like a minor thing where you you will actually see the path from the start to the end then you just have to write a little more code here and we say the path is equal to this okay it's path sorry i'm making a lot of typos here because this keyboard is like brand new and, and i'm not really used to this mechanical keyboard and plus it's a cherry mx red key switch so that's really hard to type in so coming back so if found okay so that would mean if a path has been found then we draw the path okay so now what we do is to find the path all we have to do is start from the end point and move our way backwards and how are we going to move our way backwards uh remember this parent thing here right so we start from the end and we ask who's your parent and we keep doing that doing that recursively until until, until we reach the start okay so we start at the end and we say while the point is not equal to the start point okay then so we say point is equal to parent of um point dot y and point dot x okay and then uh we oh yeah before doing that we just have to append this point to the path so we say path dot append p okay so we append p to the path and then we just um uh, uh recursively change the parent i mean inside this while loop okay and also before coming out of the for loop we just append the last point to the path and we should be good to go so now this is actually the path in reverse so if you want the path from the start to the end uh it won't really matter in our case because we'll just be drawing over the map with pixels but if you really want to be wanted to be the correct path from start to end you can just do um reverse i mean path dot reverse okay so this will actually uh, reverse the path and give you like the proper start to end path okay so so for each point in the path for p in path all you have to do is draw over the image 
right so what we want to do is um, image of p dot p dot y and p dot x is equal to you can have any color you want but I just give it as uh, white here 255 255 255 okay and we just say uh, so after all this we just say print path found okay and if the path has not been found we say print path not found okay and this is our in this is the end of breadth first search so if you run this you will actually have the final result final working result and hopefully fingers crossed this will work oh god please work please work please work okay so we start here and we go here come on come on come on okay so there you have it let me just take a print screen and show the and zoom in, in inside Photoshop and show you what this looks like. Delete this layer. Just paste over this. Uh, so frustrating. What am I doing? Did I take a print screen? I don't think I took a print screen. Did I? Print screen. Photoshop paste. Okay. So there you have it. You can see like there's actually like a small path here. You can see this white path that traces all the way back to the starting point here okay so there you have it and I'll probably leave you guys with a few simulations of a few different uh, maze solvers so let me just try a few other things so let's just try maze hard okay this is like a really crazy maze so before that let me try some easy ones right so let me just try this so stop and python file so yeah this is another small maze i think the start i think the end is here okay and let's start from here and then let's end here okay so as you can see it actually found a path but if you were to do this outside the bunny and give a path and give i mean if you if you set the start point outside and if you ask it to find a path on the inside you will actually see that it actually says path not found okay so last thing one more thing it'll be uh, maze underscore hard so this is actually a really crazy maze like a really really crazy maze it's yeah you I mean if you're like a human if you saw this like you're like totally crazy without cheating of course so let's just start here and we'll end here okay so this i mean be careful with like large images because they might actually like sometimes even like make your computer slow down and make your computer crash okay so i mean my computer is safe, I mean fairly like fast and efficient so that's fine for me so as you can see like you have a lot of repeating colors here so if you want you have to I mean if you want like a proper color spectrum like a really smooth color spectrum you will have to play around with this constant here so you remember this constant here so let's just give this as 5 or 10,000 for that matter and just run this again so I think you should be able to see like a more um, I mean the colors change slower and slower it's not as rapid as it was right so now that we, we can see like yeah it's still repeated but yeah if you, if you keep changing the constants you will find like like a proper balance so yeah that's one parameter you can play around with and yeah so that's it guys thanks for watching and uh, please leave a comment or subscribe and let me know uh, what videos you guys would like to see in the future all right and that's it see you bye bye